not gangster. That's very not gangster. I came up, got my name up. So when they speak of who blinged up, I'm who they bring up. Come up dissing and you'll come up missing. I'm a cutthroat baller like OJ Simpson. I came up, got my name up. So when they speak of who blinged up, I'm who they bring up. Come up dissing and you'll come up missing. Say that again. I couldn't hear you over the sound of me sh myself. I came up. Got my name up, so when they speak of who blinged up, I'm who they bring up. Come up dissing and you'll come up missing. I'm a cutthroat baller like OJ Simpson. Little homie, listen, try and serve me. I put a 25 in your back like Barry Bonds jersey. On the streets, on the beach, y'all ain't able. Cause two, I shit on rappers like major labels. What's with the ice grilling, homie? Change your face. This heat will do more than tan you to change your race. Girls love metaphor, and I love them back. Addicted to getting head chicks. Call me the Brainiac, battle rap with words wall like jihad. I write dope, flow crack, my notepad need rehab. Fuck y'all CDs, y'all can't see these or touch these. Rhyme so chronic, my songs give you the munchies. What? Uh, what she did, I take a shit. Yeah, but still, <laughs> like a like a newborn fucking baby, man. I eat, told you, though, she used to be shit out and sleep. <laughs> In like, her defense, she just had a successful recording, so yeah, can't be mad at all her. All she needed was somebody to change her damn diaper. You, you sure you want to talk about diaper changing, bro? At nah, this moment, nah, I'm good, bro. All right, that's what I thought, Doc. But uh, what up, though? Uh, I am. Y-U-N-G, capital F, and the F stands for Fresh, and this is the Death Fresh Show. Yeah. I'm in the building, and I'm riding with my nigga, Tone Def. He is the DJ. He's on the ones and tools. Fresh out of rehab. What? Yeah, man. Yeah, he was in rehab. Just because you listen to an old episode, hey, and look. you throw me in rehab. And now I got you out. Bro, that's like a hundred episodes ago. Right. That's a long-ass rehab, dog. I know. We had to get that creep shit out your system. <sighs> now you valid in these streets. Unless you go to rehab for something else. You don't plan on it? I, I mean... Know. We're trying to keep Tone out of rehab. We're going to start a GoFundMe to keep keep Tone off hoes. Okay. I got a question for you, dog. What's up? Is GoFundMe, in your opinion, just another way of begging? Pretty much. Because, like, niggas don't mention nothing about a GoFundMe until they need it for some shit. And, dog, uh, people be having GoFundMes for the most outlandish shit ever. Like, who the fuck cares about your trip to Vegas? Like, when did we get to that point in the world where we don't even save for trips anymore? We just beg niggas for shit? Yeah, go- GoFundMe is, like... An upscale panhandling. That's all it is. It's, it's like, like it's like I'm broke, but like I'm not out here on the street broke, but I'm still broke. Like I be wanting to do like, you know, I'm gonna put a GoFundMe up and just says I'm starting this GoFundMe because I just want to see who's gonna give me money. And put like a picture of a poor guy on it. Well apparently Ken made a Facebook stat said he forgot his wallet and he needed all his friends to cash out him a dollar so he can get some lunch. And apparently my nigga probably got about fifteen dollars out of people. And I'm not mad at him for that because that's a decent lunch. That's a de- in, that's in a, that's today's a, society. <laughs> you can get a nice good meal for fifteen dollars. Yes, but you, can. you know, Cash App is the is also the new form of panhandling because like everybody has a Cash App name, but nobody has a legitimate reason for having a Cash, a cash app. app. Like there's a few people out there, like Keisha who makes T-shirts. She uses Cash App as a form of payment. But she also has, like, everything from Apple Pay to regular credit cards. So she's I a legitimate mean, she, business. Right, she has a business. It's, right, she has a legitimate it's, business. hoes who got cash. And I was getting ready to say that. So now it's to the point that if I see a chick with a cash app in her name, I'm going to instantly think. Is she selling pussy? She's selling pussy or hair. Now, Maybe she's selling both. Ugh. Hopefully she, not selling pussy bu- hair. Bu- Ugh. <laughs> Bundles and booty huh? I guarantee you somebody would put that on a t-shirt. Uh, I, I when I buy it? No, I don't think I'll buy that. I hope not. I support it, though. Support local businesses without asking for a discount. Niggas always want to... Di- That's why black businesses don't fuck with niggas. That's why niggas don't fuck with niggas. Niggas always want to... Hey, yo, bro, man. I see you doing your thing, but 
can I get a hookup? Or when you tell them the price of things, they make a, an exaggerated situation out of it. Like a white guy can sell you a hot dog for two dollars and fifty cent, and you'll buy it with no problem. An Arabian dude in the gas station can sell you a hot dog for three dollars, and you'd be like, "Cool, that's a deal." A nigga in the taco truck. A taco truck now can sell you a hot dog for five dollars with a small ass bag of chips and a can of soda, and you're gonna be like, "Dog, this should be my lunch spot for the rest of the week." But a nigga sell you a hot dog for a dollar fifty, you're gonna be like, "Man, fuck that, nigga! I can go buy me a pack of bread and some hot dogs myself for a dollar fifty." Like, why is it just because a black person sold it to you? It's a big fucking deal. First of all, fam. Now, bread you can get for a dollar. But if they got a pack of hot dogs for 50 cents, do not eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't buy that shit, bro. I'm just using that as an example of how <laughs> it can be the best deal, but black folks will still make a big fuss about it. Like, nigga, just, if you going to buy it or you not going to buy it, duh. And I'm not saying don't patronize white folks, but don't sit here and think just because you know, Billy Bob Thornton's home of hot dogs is selling the shit that is any better than Mama J's soul food restaurant. I don't know. It, it might be a difference, bro. Because you ever had some Jay's potato chips? Yes. Then you ever ate some Lay's potato chips? That's different, though. You know, but everything has a difference. Like True. Jay's cut the shit out your mouth on the side, though. They you? will. But a Lay's is... A nice, smooth, rounded edge. Right, but the thing... phenomenal chip. But also, because black people like flavor in everything we do, that's going to be the best tasting hot dogs. So if Mama J's brand's barbecue chips are are for sale, you probably going to want those because they're going to taste better. Prime example. I hate the fact that they did this, but wrap snacks. I've never had a bag. They, they are fire. They're good. They do. They fire. Next time we're in the gas station, I see something. Grab a pair. Grab I'm a telling pair. you. Grab the like the honey barbecue ones, and then go grab one of these manufactured honey barbecue chips. Completely different taste. It's more flavorful. I now I don't think it's owned by by black people, but if it is, even better. Because no, I'm pretty sure there's a white dude somewhere. It's got to be. They always you know profiting off of us. But let's just say it's a black owned for the sake of the argument. <laughs> the chip is more flavorful, so why not fuck with it? That's fact. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'll pay an extra five cents more for this bag Wait, of chips. How much are they charging for wrap snacks? They're about the same as regular chips. As regular chips? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, it's like, but even if they were five cents more, I'm not going to bitch and moan. I'm going to grab my fucking well, chips and well, eat you, it. You're not a nigger. It's niggers. Oh, who... not the hard R. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the hard R is the people that complain about the dumbest shit. True. Like, niggers True. just. Uh, okay. So, since we talking about. The hard R. Uh, Good segue. I see what you did there. I know. I'm getting better at that. You you been you been on point with it lately though. But you know you gotta give me my credit when credit I is did, right, right. I give you a Speaking of the hard R, so this past week because you know we took off for the holiday season and whatnot. Yeah. Um, what holiday was it? Memorial. Memorial. Shout out to all my fallen soldiers. Yeah. That fought for us in the war. What, wait, what war was this? Any war. Doesn't that matter? doesn't matter. Okay. I doesn't thought it matter. was a certain war. No, no, no. Is any war? No. They made it a holiday after the Vietnam War, but it is mm-hmm. anybody who's died in War Memorial Day is for you. Not for me, nigga. I'm not dead. Well, of course not. You wouldn't be doing this podcast. This would be some weird ass shit doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. But like anybody that's died while serving the military, Memorial Day honors you. Veteran Day honors those who retired from the military, and Labor Day is supposed to be for those who are currently in. So you more of a Veterans Day? I'll be more of a Veterans Day. Do you get the free food at Applebee's? I take full advantage. As much as I forget to cash in on my birthday shit, I cash <laughs> in on all my veteran shit. Though. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's the terrible you. part. But, you know, the reason why I remember, because my job has a huge celebration for veterans, because our president... Is, is a veteran, is a, veteran huh. a retired Air Force veteran. Makes sense. So it's like, of course, they going to go all out. You, you and him serve together? Y'all not her. Her. Y'all? No. Oh, nah, nah. It's a her. No, because it, it was a him before, but he retired. He he didn't did his time. He's like, I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> I'm 
I'm, I'm going to go ahead and step down. And now we got a female in charge. And she, too, was prior service, too. So it's a dope. Yeah, I love my so, job. So speaking of females. And the hard R. And the hard R. Like, and, you, but, and you know what's funny? Because she didn't even use a hard R. She didn't. But she still shouldn't have said it because he asked her not to say okay, it. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Kendrick Lamar did a show. Where was he at? Was he in California? Alabama. In Alabama. That's right. Did the, a show in Alabama. The most where... racist place <laughs> in America. I think that's Arkansas, but <laughs> we'll let it slide. It, it, it's definitely the top five. Uh, he did a show down there in Alabama where he actually brung a young lady on stage to actually join him in singing one of his songs. Um, I told you every time. Swear I got you. I will sing clips. Oh, I got along. They probably got me down by the end of the song. Seem like the whole city go against me. Every time I'm in the street, I hear yeah, 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 yeah. Men don't wait for you. telling you guys it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong now as you can see here in in this video well, the they, crowd they, was they all can't, they can't see well as you can hear here in this video <laughs> um the crowd was already iffy when he pulled a white woman on stage to begin with so she starts singing the song now she slid the n-word in the first time while singing the song and you can hear the crowd like, whoa. But Kendrick let the first one slide. She did it again the second time, and he had to stop the whole show. It's like, oh, no, you can't say that. And she's like, oh, did, did I say the N-word? <laughs> he's like, yes, yes, you did. I, I feel like it was a setup. But here, the, I don't know, because here's the thing. After she corrected him, he continued along with the song. And immediately after saying it, she said it again. The, the fact that she tried to guilt trip him and, and ask Kendrick, was she not cool enough to say it? Like, no, bitch, you not. But here's the thing. That that literally is a, is a thing white people do. They literally will ask their black friends if they can see. When I seen that video, only thing I could think about was the episode, was the movie Dirty Grandpa. Did you ever watch it? I have watched Dirty Grandpa. That's, okay. that's the movie with uh, Robert De Niro, right? Yeah, Robert De Niro. And Zach Efron? And Zach Efron. That shit's funny. There's a scene where they're at the club and they're singing Today is a Good Day. Now, they were hanging out with a group of gangsters when they was in this club. I'm mad at them air quotes. I know. Because, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro, like, you could not believe that these dudes was gangsters in real life if you met them anyway. All right? So... They uh, were singing today was a good day. And they got to a part where, of course, they had to say nigga. Now, Robert Downing, I mean, Robert De Niro, my bad. I'm thinking of Tony Starks. Uh, Robert De Niro is really into the song. and He's cool. And, and, and he gets to the part. It's like, no, nah, I can't say it. It's like, no, nah, man, say it. Say it. Say that shit. Say that shit. And then he said it. And, like, they went crazy. Now, Zac Efron is embarrassed like a motherfucker at this point. But it was just funny. Like, white folks really do look for our justification to use the N-word. And when we, as their friends, tell them, yeah, you can say it in this moment, that's their go-to answer whenever they say it around other black people. Like, we physically have hand them a get-out-of-jail-free card to use the N-word. Like... Juan, are you at work telling white folks that they can say the N word? No, hell no. I, you know what? I make very uncomfortable jokes around white people. So if my coworker did say it, some of the shit I say to them, I probably couldn't get mad. Because, like, okay, so there's my department manager who's a white lady. I don't really fuck with her like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then my assistant department manager is a white guy. His name's John. He cool as shit. And, like, one day, I was fucking with him, and I was like, 
hey, yo, John, you should let me use your white privilege to buy a car. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I asked him, could I use his white privilege? And what did he say? He he looked at me like, like he had that nigga for real look. But he didn't say the N word. Then he was like, "Wine, I don't think it's something that you can just borrow." So he <laughs> he did admit there is white privilege. Yes, though. he did. Oh, okay. okay, he he knows his white privilege. Okay, as he, long as they he doesn't admit- think he has any because he's got shitty credit. No. I was like, nah, bro, you still got white privilege. You just, you can't afford white luxuries. Right, that's a different. Credit. You can get but, away with white shit. You just can't get white high class shit. Yeah, you don't get white. You got to trade up. You don't get the good white shit because you have shitty credit. Right, you got to buy something for a while, yeah. keep it, then trade it in to get away with the good yeah. shit. Yeah, white people. I think white people are born with like a 750 credit score. We kind of <laughs> all are. All right, so quick history lesson. Like, we're all set up with good credit. The problem is, is they're taught how to use credit, and we're taught how to use money with everything. So we we mess our credit up involuntarily because we don't know the effects of it until it's too late. That's basically what happens. Because how many times have you said you'll pay your cell phone bill when you can You'll make payment arrangements and pay for it when you can pay for it. Yeah, if that shit high as a motherfucker. Right. Whereas in white folks will break their neck and eat romaine noodles for a month to make sure all their bills are paid on time. They're not going to let no bill go past due because they know how it affects their credit. Where we just like, you get your money when you get your money. Or when we energies be like, we can't cut you off in the winter. We sometimes be like, man, I'm not paying in December. This is going to the Christmas money. Not realizing our credit technically is still being affected. So it's a catch-22. Like, if nobody teaches us about it, we don't know no better. So, oh, so like, poor money management will fuck up your credit, pretty much. Basically, yeah. number one thing. Sound, yeah. sounds For those boring. of you guys who want to know how to manage your money better, check out on Tone Def Radio. We do have a small series of money management. And credit reporting was the first two episodes, so make sure you check that out. Where? Not on the Deaf Rush Show? No, it's actually on Tone Deaf Radio. When you go to Spreaker and you go to show section, it's under one shot. I have a whole series that we did about money management. I must have been asleep. Yeah, when you were. I wasn't. No, actually, wasn't in your defense, when we were doing this, you were actually at work. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, money management, nigga. I ain't got no credit. I need to find out how to get some. You know, go ahead and check out them past episodes. Who, who'd you have telling us? Was it a woman? Actually, I, had, I actually had um, a credit specialist, a credit repair specialist. Now, it was funny because she really didn't want to give away her secrets because technically that's her job. <laughs> so she didn't want to give away all the answers and nobody comes to see her. So she gave us just enough to get the ball rolling. I think people will still go see her because niggas is like, yeah. Why? I, why should I do it when you could do it for me? And that's what we finally like at the end of the show. That's kind of where we got to it. At was like, hey, as much information we gave you today, we we barely scratched the surface of how it is. So if you want to, you know, need a little more help or you want to go to some of these classes she offers, here's her information. So you know, they don't want to take everything from everybody. But I mean, apparently. People are taking stuff from each other this day and age because rap beef this particular week, dog, has been insane. Like, people have been taking shots at each other for at least the last 48 hours, dog. Yeah, they have. Like, and this is what actually gets into the meat of our show tonight, people. When is it too far? Yeah, because, I mean, like, okay, I watch a lot of battle rap. So I understand, I understand the essence of diss tracks. You don't have to be telling the truth on a diss track. The diss track is to sway the crowd's opinion, which is, which is what they do in battle rap. But when is too, when is it too far? Okay. So let's look at the history of diss track to begin with now for those of you people who are just now really 
experienced diss tracks over the course of the last five years. There was a documented series that came out. Was it early 2000s or late 90s? The Beef Series. The Beef Series? I want to say I got... I want to say the beef series was like mid two thousands. Okay, so well, yeah, because the first beef was documented like fifty, right? And his beef with Ja Rule and them, right? So, and it had a few more sprinkled into it, right? So that documentary probably dropped at probably before Get Rich or Die Trying. And what that, is it? That came out in oh three. So the first beef documentary is probably like two thousand two, but it did give you like a history. Of of battle beef, so it did talk about like KRS One and him doing the bridges over this track and right Jay and Nas type shit. So it gave you a brief history of you know beef in its essence type shit. So yeah, if you've never uh, if you've never seen the docu documentary series Beef, you can find it on YouTube. And yeah. just type in beef DVDs type shit. Or right. if you have a fire stick, I'm Yeah, it dropped sure. in 2003. So I knew it was like early 2000s. Oh, and, you Googled it? Yeah, Wikipedia can be your best friend, bro. So. I it, think it's like five of them, too. Yeah, I think it's, I know it's three for sure, because I have the first three. But uh, I don't know why I have them. Eh, it's a good shit to have in your It collection. was. I guess it was shit you were supposed to have. But like. You brought up a good point, whereas in going back as far as KRS-One and MC Shan, uh, Kumo D and Busy B, which was the very first diss ever, for you young cats who never listened to the Golden Age of Rap. So basically, when hip-hop first came out back in the days, it was more of a, a party scene, okay? So music that niggas make strictly for the club, that's what hip-hop used to be, period. And one cat which was what MCs used to be, were they wasn't the people who were rapping now and that. They were basically cats that just moved the crowd. They'd get in, tell you what's going on, get the party starting. Basically shit that the DJs do now it's when what, they're DJing. Is what rappers used what to do. What rappers used to do. What happened was Kumo D was actually one of your first lyricists. So a cat named Busy B was well known for moving the crowd. So he got done doing his set with his DJ and Kumo came out and just immediately just started dissing Busy B. It was pretty epic, too. It was epic because folks didn't know what to do. Because it was like, whoa, this MC just talked bad about this MC over here for no reason. But you know what? I'm going to keep my eye on this MC to see what he got to say. So the crowd that used to come in strictly for Busy B now came for Kumo D. So it was a fan thing where they would go back and I forth. Feel, I feel like you lived that time. Like, I, like, I, like I did. You, like you were there. Like I you, wasn't there. Not was, that there, but I feel like that, that was your age. Of it like was. You I'm first not. I'm telling pop. my. Well, you niggas call me old all the time, so I don't get no fuck. But yeah, this, this is this is stuff like this is what got me hooked into music. So then when Kumo D became the dude you had to keep tabs on. Him and LL started beefing. I remember. Well, I don't remember that, but I, I did like do some research on that. Yeah, that's when you got like the Jack the Ripper, the Wild Wild West. Oh, okay, so was Wild Wild West a shot at LL? Yes. I have to go back and listen to that yeah. now. Wild Wild West was a shot at LL. So to me, that was my first pure taste of this. But that was the thing about it back in the days. Beef used to just be nothing more than me one-upping you on the track. Right. It, and it never went past that. But then, all of a sudden... I think that was when beef was mostly... It wasn't even beef. It was just like bars. It was then. bars. It was bars to bars. It was like, I'm the top MC. You the up-and-coming MC. The up-and-coming MC takes shots to the top MC because I'm trying to take your throne. I got to put you in your place. This That's what it was. With the exception of MC Shan and KRS-One, that was a whole... Nigga, hip-hop was born over here. No, hip-hop was born over here. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of fuck yous. <laughs> That's what that was. And then of course the Roxanne Wars, which was I did not know that they brought in this many fucking Roxanne. See what happened was that was the first time someone took advantage of hip hop. It's like how the Millie beat. Okay. okay? You know like when the Millie beat dropped, everybody got on it. You couldn't no one would listen to you if you didn't have a version of you freestyling on the Millie beat, right? Right. 
that's kind of how the Roxanne Wars was. Everybody who wanted to be known got a female and had this female kind of answer UTFO. So people would listen to you because the song was never initially made to be a diss song. It was It was a song about a girl named Roxanne. Roxanne Shantae at the time was probably one of the hottest battle rappers anybody known. If you guys hadn't seen the Roxanne documentary or movie documentary on Netflix, check it out. It'll give you the whole backstory on that. And by the way, Neil Long was fine. She was. Even as a bad parent, she Goddamn was fine. Goddamn drunk, but she was still fine. Uh <laughs> But at the end of the day, like, that sparked beef. So beef in the beginning was just ordinary hip-hop. It hip-hop. hip-hop. It was hip-hop. It was pure. But then somebody by the government name of O'Shea Jackson yeah. <laughs> got highly upset at the previous group of African-American males with anger issues, a.k.a. niggas with attitudes, and their managing company ran by Jerry Heller and decided to tell somebody fuck you in the purest form and we got the most raw disc called No Vaseline so the Ice Cube really start the wave of disrespect as far as like beef go yes because I don't remember anybody yes. being no. this disrespectful Nobody. until No Vaseline no. dropped. See, but then after watching the Straight Outta Compton movie, because I, I kind of knew that, but the Straight Outta Compton movie solidified it, especially being the fact that the movie was told by members of N.W.A. Spoiler alert, Easy e died. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Yeah, but you know how niggas is. Him and Uncle Charlie went to... And crossroads my did. Uncle Charles <laughs> Okay. But he was mad, bro. Like, niggas clearly told him that we're not going to give you no money. We're not going to give you your money. Okay? NWA responded. Wasn't that 100 miles and running that they responded with? See. Or was that not a diss track? Okay. So, here's the thing. That's what started it. Oh, so they dissed him first. What happened was in 100 Miles and Running, Dre said a line said, we got off though. We dropped one nigga, and now we making all the dough. Because no, we first we started with too much cargo. We dropped one nigga, and now we making all the dough. At that time, Q was the only person who left NWA. Ooh. So at that point in time, he took that personal. Oh, Dr. Dr. Dre with the bars. Now, we clearly know that Ren wrote it. Yeah, yeah we know. <laughs> Ren or DOC wrote it. But that is what got you know Vaseline. And that's the thing. History has proven that all it takes is one line. For a nigga to just For a nigga get, to just get, get off. Because get off. let's look at Jay and Nas. I don't really know how that started. It all started because Nas had a song that said the dead presidents represent me. Then Jay took it and sampled it. Okay. I remember, I remember our, the, the line came from a song of Illmatic, right? Yeah. And then Jay used dead cause dead presidents was on reasonable doubt. Right. Okay. I remember that. So that was a nine sample when he did the song dead presidents. Yep. He sampled him. So that's where the line came. Like, I sampled your voice. You was using it wrong. You made it a hot line. Yeah, I made, I made it a hot, hot song. song. Yep. Oh, see, they, you put pieces together on the Death Fresh show. Yeah, so that started right there. So that's what made them go back and forth. Now, as personal as... I feel like we skip and we shouldn't skip Tupac and Biggie. I'm getting there. But continue. I'm getting there. Because that's, that's going... That's going to... Culmination. Okay. Okay, that's the culmination. Because now that beef with the Nas and Biggie, that Nas and Jay, that went back to just um, being lyrical. Right. It went back to the roots. Now, Pac and Biggie, that's when Savagery just reached an all new height. I felt like Pac was the second coming to Ice Cube on Hit Him Up. He was. He channeled Ice Cube. You could tell he channeled Ice Cube. But at that time, like, people was battling and people was dissing, but they wasn't. Too reckless. Like, DJ Quick. DJ Quick had beef? He had beef with MC8. Yeah. 
the nigga from Minister Society? Yeah. He had beef with MCA. Why? It was over a situation in the club. And he, he got he he got nasty too. He said he spelt his name. He said E I H T That's what they send you. You left out the G because the G ain't in you. <laughs> DJ quick with the bars. But it, it it was pretty nasty. It wasn't an ice cube level, but it was it was vicious because he he went at his production, he went at his sexuality, he went at him. Did MC eight ever respond? MC eight responded, but dollars and cents was so personal, and it was on a soundtrack. I think it was on the Minister Society soundtrack. It was. It was on the Minister Society soundtrack, and that's when soundtracks. Sometimes sold more than actual albums. So MC8 responded on the soundtrack? No. Dollars and Cents was on the soundtrack. Which was the disc. Was the disc. But MC8 was on the soundtrack. Right. He was on the soundtrack. Oh, I know he had to be pissed and nervous <laughs> in the session. Right. So like, you hey, get... we got the song DJ Quick. <laughs> he listen to it. It's like, this motherfucker's talking to me. Because he, he ain't got no control over what makes the soundtrack or not. Facts. Because he dropped, what, straight up Menace. Yeah. So he, yeah. It was a great song. It was a great song. It was a great song. But yeah, when we got the Pac and Biggie though, that was a whole nother story right there. So so do you feel like Tupac went too far? <sighs> yes. And here's the reason why. There was never no proof proven that him and Faith ever did anything. Right. But for you to start your song off as I fucked your bitch. You fat motherfucker. <laughs> like, bro, you gotta get hands. Like, and this all came off the off of accusations of a situation that this man set you up in a record studio when countless people keep saying he had nothing to do with it. But you know what though? Like, after seeing now because Tupac is no longer with us in life, them doing this movie, it was okay. It was good for what right. it was. But you getting all these stories that they put in the movie, second, third, fifth hand type shit. Right. So, but from the way they broke it down or like the visuals that they gave from the movie, Pac was calculated with his diss track for Biggie. Okay. Because... He saw Faith in a club that night, as we saw. Right. They took a couple of pictures. With an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nigga. Yeah, because they definitely didn't have no iPhones in 96. Right. But or did they? I, they probably did. Cause they, they didn't have none. They didn't have none. <laughs> they didn't have we don't know. Right. Maybe Pac got the time stop. He was time traveling. He may have knew Steve Jobs back then. Yeah. But I feel like, like from the visuals that the movie gave us, he was calculated with his disc. He knew that taking pictures with Faith, and if these pictures got out, we could spend it the way we want to because me and your husband don't get along right now. We, True. We're at odds. And the fact that if you dig in Apple Music and you look long enough, there is the they do have the track that he actually did with Faith. Right. It was, uh, you remember the song, Wonder Why They Call You Bitch? Yeah. Faith is the original vocalist on the song, Wonder Why They Call You Bitch. Right. If you go and listen to the Machiavelli versions of a lot of the songs that eventually became his his post albums that song is on there why would they that well, I could see you gotta remember the machiavellis were mixtapes before mixtapes were ever mixtapes yeah so because he was at, like I, I had seen in some like in old interviews that they was doing that Pac wanted to jump on a mixtape wave way before what it is now right. because of how we couldn't get out of his death row contract. Right. So he just wanted to make music and give it away and for give free. give it away for free so that way Suge couldn't get paid for it. And that's basically because they were about 17 Machiavellis. I have all of them thanks to technology, but I had at least seven of them during that time frame. Like we used to trade them things around. Actually, matter of fact, that used to be one of my main CD hustles. <laughs> Selling and Machiavellis. Ma- Machiavellis, dog. Think about it, dog. The guy just died, and then there's this new music that's floating out there, Facts. and Tone got it. Nigga, how much yeah. you want? 10, 15, 20? Niggas was paying me $20 a CD for that, dog, because we never thought we were going to get any more music from him. Good hustle. Great hustle. $20 for a CD, nigga? Fam, some cats couldn't get 15 for a mix. Man. <laughs> how much niggas charging that much for? Niggas is doo-doo. Because it was the technology at the time, bro. Right, everybody didn't have a CD burner. 
Right. But going back to the beef, I believe it was a tactical thing. Like, you knew if we take these pictures, that's just like if you get seen as a photograph with some niggas or with a bitch, and they be like, okay, well, we know how this is going to look, and we put it out first. Right. Tone, caught a piece of bullshit, and then, you know, they use it against you. So it's like, right. you got these pictures with Faith, then that allowed you the freedom to jump on the track and say, I fucked your bitch, even if you never had sex with Faith. So what you're saying is it's the old theory of who said it first is who we going to believe. Right. And like we know nowadays that the lie is always more interesting than the truth. Like, I true. don't think Pac fuck Faith. No. And then going, like, listening to her interviews, is like when she went to go record the vocals for the song, it was like 70 niggas in the room. Like, I'm not finna sit in this motherfucker and I'm a dude. Like, I, I'm out, bro. It's too right. much. Fact. It's too much. Fact. I'm out. But, I mean, what I've come to realize over history, a lot of times, beef itself has absolutely nothing to do with a personal issue with me and you. The beef has to do with selling records. For an example, Dre and Easy, after Dre realized what Cube was saying was mostly true, and he jumped ship and went to go do his own thing, Easy and Dre was going back and forth beefing for a long time. The irony behind it was Easy was making money off of Dre Records because that was his final deal to get out the contract. So at the end of the day, the chronic was being split three ways. Suge and Death Row got some, Dre got some, and Easy mm. got some as his final contract deal. But if you pay attention, during that time, Easy and Dre was going back and forth, right. dissing left and right. Cause mostly I, Easy. Because I believe the first single from the chronic that I remember was Dre Day. Was Dre Day. And he took shots at Luke and Easy. Which we still got to find out what the fuck Luke did. I don't know. Nigga, look that shit up, though. <laughs> look up Luke versus Dre, though. We got to find out why Dre Luke was at Luke. Because I remember Luke making a diss track because he got his boys to help out on the track. But now that you say that they had to split the chronic three ways, see, it's like when you find out the little nuances yeah. of situations. It, it perpetuates the bars now that they spit because it makes more sense. Right. Because in Real Motherfucking G's, which was Easy's response right. to Dre Day, he was like, damn, dog, they tried to play you on Dre Day. And then Easy was like, but Dre Day, Day only make, makes, makes Easy's, Easy's payday. Day. Right. Because he's getting paid off the Right, credit. he's getting, and that's why I'm thinking, like, Easy wasn't really going to make that much money as a solo artist because that was never him. We've we seen that in Straight Outta Compton. <clears throat> that Easy was never a rapper, okay? So for him to go into the studio and to have something to rap about, he can only rap about so many things, okay? But having a diss record is going to make people buy your record because they want to hear what you got to say, or if they did hear Neighborhood Sniper, which was the one that started it, they're like, oh, shit, Easy taking shots at Dre. Then you get Dre Day, it's like, oh, shit, Drake taking shots at Easy, and we got all these niggas from uh, Death Row on here. This is fucking fire. And then Easy turns right around and makes another response, and it's like, oh shit, three albums just got sold because two niggas don't agree. I feel like that's when hip hop was really loyal back then, and I and that's how I think a lot of it was back because in the days. When you think about it. Snoop had just got signed. Right. So what the fuck did he have to do with any of this NWA shit? Not at all. But the first thing that nigga do is, oh, you got beef with Dre? I'm jumping out the window for my nigga. Because that, was, that <laughs> was his meal ticket, dog. Yeah, he jumped right out the and window. And that was probably the realest thing. But see, that's always been happening, though, because even when you look at like artists now, like when Ja Rule in 50 was going at it, M got in it. Right. Okay. Some of them little... Buster Rhymes got it. <laughs> Look here, Jeffrey. Oh, man. <laughs> when a nigga call you by your government on a track, bro, we had, like, I think we have to fight. Like, but he had that coming, though, because let's be honest. What has Bust? The only people who can ever have beef with Buster Rhymes was the niggas from Leaders of the New School. Right. 
which was one dude, which was Charlie Brown. He's the only one who, in my honest opinion, could have ever have an issue with Buster Rhymes. So for Ja Rule to take shots at Buster Rhymes, to me, that didn't make sense. Wait, when did J- See, I must not have been too heavy into this. Before. Like, when did Ja take shots at Buster Rhymes? Do I think on the same Loose Chain song. Oh, God. It was somewhere in there, because I remember when 50M and Buster all got on one track. Because they redid the, uh, I want to say it was Hail Mary. Yeah, it was Hail that, Mary. That they got on. Buster was at the end. Yeah. He was at the end. He's like, look here, Jeffrey. Like, he didn't even really, like, rap. He, like, talked to dude. Like, look here, Jeffrey. Keep my name out your mouth. But, okay, so as we, you know, dive deep into the beef before we get to the main event of the beef, which is the topic of the show. Do you think that the media plays like a big part into, because I I don't, I don't remember the loose change track, but I do remember they played Busta Rhymes 50 and M's version of Hail Mary. And they was playing it on the radio. And then I think they chopped it up and added like Tupac's vocals. So we looked like a Hail Mary remix and they would play it on the radio. Well, take in consideration. Let's, let's look back to Pac and Biggie's beef. Okay, it it was proven that the media perpetuated that beef to be far bigger and far worse than what it should have been. Like even Pac said, there, there's no such, there's no East Coast West Coast thing. Period. Is is literally just me and Biggie. We had issues. The media made it an East Coast West Coast thing because it, then it went from Pac and Biggie to Death Row and Bad Boys. Then it went from Death Row to Bad Boys to the East Coast versus the West Coast, which we all know was not the case. But that also could be like riding for your boy when you think about it because Daz and uh, Corrupt, they started dissing Bad Boys. What they got to do with this? They... They definitely took shots at the whole NYC, though. Right. The yeah. whole, yeah, New York, New York. New York, New York. Dog, that was so disrespectful. Yeah. They, uh, when they filmed it, they got shot at. I believe that. There, there is a story out there, and I think uh, Snoop Dogg confirmed it, that when they went to New York to shoot New York, New York, somebody came through the video shoot and shot it up. That's believable. And But you gotta, you gotta, okay, so... Next question. Is all diss tracks worth a response? It all depends on what's being said. So, like, when the West Side Connection... Well, let me back this up. When Common took the song and basically made it seem like hip-hop by going... West. Go on West. I used to love her. I couldn't think of the name of it. Go on West Coast and they got all gangsta and got all ruined and got all ter- tore up. Q took it personal. Well, actually, Dub C took it personal. But when you got Mac 10 and Dub C and Ice Q, it's, it's going to get a little nasty because. I mean, I can, I can see why they took it personal. Yeah, I would take it personal too. When I go back and I listen to it, yeah, I can understand why they took it personal. Right, like just too. because we, you know, we added gangster music don't mean Don't this, mean that, like, don't it's mean bad. Ain't, right, don't right. mean this ain't hip hop. I get that. It's just another version of it. But they came at him about him. So he dropped the bitch in you. Technically, when the bitch in you came out, you had to respond. Because the title alone is The Bitch in You. So did Westside Connection respond? They did respond, but I think after that they squashed the beef because it was just a misunderstanding. You know, that was back in the days when like Chuck D would intervene and shit. <laughs> but, and I also feel like like beef nowadays ain't what it used to be. And I say that because like, okay, back in like the late 90s, okay, I would say mid 90s, to like the mid 2000s we had all these platforms for hip hop right like we had the double x well i don't know if we had double xl awards but there was the source awards yeah which was pretty much the ratchet shit right so it's like you could talk all this tough shit on these records but everybody comes to the source awards but that's why you had so many fights at the source source awards right that's what i'm saying so it was like if it was really an issue 
Like, okay, yeah, I heard your little diss song, but you got to see me because we both going to be in the building. Because we both may be the hottest right. rappers right now. So we up for awards. I'm not ducking no action. So either we're going to talk about it or we're going to fight about it. And see, that's why I feel like some of these these beefs or these diss tracks are authentic. Are not authentic. They've been pre planned, they've been pre instigated. Like, I feel like some diss tracks or some beefs only occur to sell records. Like, for an example, Kanye West versus 50 with, uh, was it Graduation? Yes, uh, it was Graduation, and I think 50 was dropping Curtis. Curtis, all right. But, but see, that beef, I get it. It was it was fun. It was playful. It was marketing. Like, True. Kanye West was probably the hottest nigga out at the time. 50 musically wasn't really popping, but I see the strategy in it. Right. 50 was like, well, if I take a few shots at you on some friendly shit, I can piggyback off your buzz because they're gonna buy your they're gonna buy my album to hear what I said about Kanye. And then in return, they're gonna buy your album to see if you responded on your album. The uh, beef went all the way up to number six. Yeah, that's too many. That's too that's too much beef. But and you need some chicken in your life at that point. Wait, I mean, is chicken the, the the right one to use? Maybe maybe pork? I don't know. Pork. Uh. But I can, I can see, like, when it's manufactured beef to sell records, I guess it's cool. Well, at least you know it won't turn violent. But, yeah. like... It shouldn't turn violent because if you think about, like, Royce to 5'9 and D12's beef... It, I, I was serious. It, it turned violent. Like, it got to a point where neither one of them niggas could go any... Like, neither D12 or Royce could really go in Detroit or certain parts of Detroit without some kind of issue coming back and forth that it took the death of proof to make niggas really squash that shit and proof got killed on some random shit. But see, I think, I think when that shit happens is because like, okay, I'll put it like this. If, if I was to ever get famous from rapping, right. Or if I were like, we were to get famous from doing this podcast shit there are there are our friends like Seth and Weave and those who we fuck with who do podcasts. Right. So they're in the industry. Right. So they understand the game that we're in. Right. But then there are those niggas that don't do what we do that you don't leave behind that when you bring them to try to clean them up, they still street niggas at the end of the day. So you basically talking Jay and Beans. Right. As an example. Hove was the rapper. Right. And Beans was a nigga from the streets with talent. True. He wanted Beans to be what him and Bleak was. Right. Like, we're industry now. We not out here in the streets. Beans couldn't let that street shit go. Because that's all he knew, though. I'm not knocking him for I'm not knocking him, but yeah, sometimes you 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 have have to to separate. Right. You either have to separate or you have to pick. Either you're going to be all the way in the streets and be out here, or you're going to be all the way in the industry and move how we move. But that's what ended up happening, though. He decided to stay with that street life, and Jay had to let him go. This is why you end up in jail. True. This is why when Jay died, Bleak is in the wheel somewhere. I don't know why, though. Like, what does Bleak have on Jay? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's got, like Bleak had to have taken a major fucking L on behalf of Jay. Maybe Hove. Maybe Hove really not Hove. Maybe Hove not really this hustler that he been telling us he is. So you saying that Bleak is the one that did all the dirt and maybe, maybe they them. killed they killed the real nigga who did it and Bleak just happens to know? I'm just saying maybe Bleak was really out here moving that shit. Maybe then was Bleak ninety two bricks that uh Hove lost. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Just that But then again, that's just loyalty. It is. That's just friendship. I mean, but sometimes some beef comes from a misunderstanding even within your own crew. Yeah, like Tupac. He had beef with everybody for no fucking reason. Well, he, he was paranoid after. Like, bro, somebody robbed you. You got one of the most notorious gangsters known at the time in what, your ear. What did Nas do to Pac? <laughs> Nas was at the wrong place at the wrong time. A little nigga named Nas think he live like me. Like, what? what the... He just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong Why time. Why was he taking shots at Jay? Jay wasn't even on. Well, he was on, but he wasn't popping. Like, Reasonable Doubt was... I think at the time... No, at the time, Pac 
was basically shooting anybody in Big's camp. If you were down with Big, because he, he said that if you down with Big, fuck you. Like, why did Chino XL get shot? I really don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, he said, he said, Chino XL, fuck you. He said that shit hard. And what did Chino do to Pop? Like, the only track Chino has ever been on that I know of <laughs> was the Sway and Tech in the Morning sang a single with him. <laughs> so, like, Chino didn't deserve that bullet. <laughs> Chino XL, fuck you too. I man. don't think Chino XL career ever got off the ground. Because of that. I wonder if Chino heard that. I was like, damn, bro, what'd I do to Pac? Like, for real. Like, you like you just imagine, like, you, an uh, innocent bystander, hear your name as a rap beef. You're like, God, what the fuck did I do? I mean, but sometimes rap beef do be because niggas think that they bigger than what they really are. Because, like, I look at niggas like Chingy, for an example. Like, Chingy wow. had beef with Nelly, and then he ended up having beef with Luda and DTP as a whole. Like, I get it. Nelly was the hottest nigga at the time on the scene. And then you were next in line in so many words. So I can understand that beef. That beef should happen because you want to get better, right? Right. But why are you got beef with your own label? Because technically, Chingy was supposed to be with Nelly and them. No, no, no. Or do well, you, you, you probably would know this beef better than I would. It, it's, it's, on a, it's on one of the DVDs. So apparently, when uh, Nelly had dropped Country Grammar, right, and he started getting popping, and I think he was working on Nellyville, but Nelly was going on tour. So while Nelly and the St. Lunatics was on tour, he brought Chingy with him, right. So Chingy will open up for Nelly. Now at this time, when Chingy started getting his name out here for opening up for Nelly. It was right around the time where Nelly had put St. Louis on the map. Right. So people wanted to kind of swoop in and capitalize on this St. Louis sound. And then Chingy gets signed, and then, you know, maybe like a year later, then we hear Jay Quan. So people was pretty much trying to capitalize on it. Right. And I guess Nelly makes a reference to... He didn't really say Chingy's name in the song. Oh, you're talking about another one? Yeah, he didn't say his name, but I felt like Chingy felt like he was taking shots. But he was stating the fact. Well, okay, he was, I, I, he I was like, y'all, y'all thought country was bummy till country started making money. And now you niggas is all in Kentucky. Y'all trying to sign niggas from where we're from when originally nobody would touch Nelly with a 10 foot fucking pole. Right. Because they thought his sound was fucking country. Right. Okay. So I just did a little quick synopsis on the beat, on the beef and whatnot. But what it says basically was Chingy was making a little noise. Nelly was making a little noise at the same time. He put Chingy on a tour, like you said, but Chingy felt like by him being the opening act, he was trying to hold Chingy down. So Chingy didn't like that. We didn't know who the fuck he was. And I'm not disagreeing with you. So then he signed with Luda because they gave him a deal and whatnot. So when he really started popping over there, that's when he took the shot at Nelly and Nelly took the shot back at him. But my whole thing was Chingy was getting too big headed period because he turned around and basically said that Ludacris and then was trying to hold him back. This is what happens when you make one successful album. Well, you gotta remember he came out during the time when ringtone rapping started blowing up too. So one I, song, I, I I blame all that on Soldier Boy. That's that's a whole nother show. <laughs> that's all Soldier Boy. Ringtone rap is Soldier Boy's fault. He got a lot of niggas paid though. He did. That's why you really can't be mad. They started giving niggas deal based off could you sell ringtones? Because one ringtone technically makes you a one hit wonder. Facts. So why not get this extra side money? Yeah, but Chingy had one good album, which was his first album on Disturbing the Peace. Fact, and. I, but I kind of feel where he was going. Like, hey, I'm hot. You niggas is, is is fucking up right now. Let me get some shine. I feel like if Chingy would have sat back and waited his turn, Chingy probably be as big as Nelly right now. He'd probably still be touring off simple ass songs. Facts. But my thing is, dog, you got dissed by Lil Fate. Oh, God. <laughs> and he, 
he came at your neck. He's like, hey, just so you want to know, this is a little fate, homie. Like, he literally said in the diss, got one drop, he dropped jackpot, it flopped. <laughs> like, he came at Chinky. Like, the whole, everybody else is just over here rapping the, the, the crew song, and he dissing you on the whole track. And you never came. You let Lil Fate win, dog. The weakest nigga in the camp won. Hey man, sometimes you just that's what that's what was my earlier question. Like all diss tracks don't warrant it. all diss tracks don't warrant a response. It don't warrant, but sometimes But you know who should respond? Who? Big Sean. That nigga needs to get up off the canvas, bro. Wait a minute, who dissed him? Like Kendrick been that Big Sean neck for like the past. Ever since Control dropped, I don't know if you remember Control. Of course. Ever since um, Control dropped. But you know the only person who really responded to Control was Big Crit with Mount Olympus. I, I, I respect Big Crit. But the thing about it is Big Crit lets you know this was not a diss track, but he came hard as fuck on that song. And and you like okay? I feel like the control track, Kendrick was just being a bully. He was. I, I will. And, I will definitely agree with he, you on that. He was like, "Hey, look, I'm the best nigga out here. Ain't none of you niggas finna tell me different. If you want smoke, pull up. And nobody wants to pull up. Big Crit was like, you know what, bro? This ain't a diss track, but I'm gonna show you you're not the best nigga out here doing it right now. And Big Crit got his shit off on Mount Olympus. Which when people, it, when people talk about who's the top rappers in the game and nobody mentions Crit, it fucking bothers me. That's because Southern niggas won't get the respect they need. He needs credit. I feel like if Wayne could go on a tangent and tell niggas he was the best rapper alive, and people got behind it. Then why you can't give Southern niggas credit? I mean, Ti's got bars. I mean, they just now starting to get credit. But even then, in this world of mumble rap, okay, Scarface has always gotten the respect. Like, you you won't argue Scarface is one of the greatest. No, you won't. You can't. Even if you don't listen to his music, you, you, know, you know. You know okay? some Scarface songs. But then there was a moment in time when, after this, so the East Coast, West Coast beef, that the South took over because we got tired of hearing everybody talking about everybody. Okay? But then that's when, like, cats like No Limit and cash money snuck in niggas started hating the south because no limit flooded the scenes with garbage ass music well when you look back at it now yes it is garbage it was but, garbage ass but music. back then living in the times of being a fan you you embrace the fact that master p had music out almost every other week oh we embrace master p like he's literally probably one of the greatest to ever do it because He's the epitome of hip-hop. Like, he came from the hood. He lived every childhood dream that you could want. He's a rapper. He owns a mega company. He played basketball. He was a wrestler. Like, he lived every kid's hood dream. Master P is the only nigga in life to make it out of the ghetto all three ways. All three ways. He rapped, played ball, and so dope. Facts. And, and got out the ghetto. Facts. All three ways. But here's what makes him pure hip-hop. He went back and got his people. He didn't just get his family. He got his peoples. Because two-thirds of No Limits roster would not have made it on their own. Nigga, Silk wouldn't have made it on his own. He's part of that two-third, bro. <laughs> oh, okay. just, just checking. <laughs> He's part Silk, of that two-third. Silk was garbage. Like, truth be told, Magic, Murder, Mac, Mia, the old Mr. Servon. Yeah, I don't know. Not what, the new one. I don't know what the fuck he was after that song. Mystical. Mystical and Fiend would have been the only niggas if No Limit never existed. Would have been the only niggas to make it. Would have only been the niggas to make it. That's that's true. That's Everybody true. else, Skull Duggery, Full Blooded, uh, Cain and Abel. Big, big Ed, the assassin. Big Ed. God. Big Ed is the definition of your friend can't rap, but he got a good delivery, so somebody else writes for him. Oh, and Big <laughs> Ed, doo doo. <laughs> oh, and Brother Lich Hung would have got off on his own, but that was like 
when he when Master P was still West Coast to me at that time. But uh, a lot of niggas just they got sick of the sound because P flooded it, dog. Like it's one thing if you give us quality, dog. Even if every artist gave you one quality good song. Not everybody was quality, no, dog. Only them seven people that you named gave out quality albums. Quality. On the and I don't include Young Bleed because Young Bleed and C Loke and Max Minnelli and Lil Bootsy, which people don't know that. Yeah, that was. They were all over here on their own. That Young Bleed album was because C Loke was doing production on some of uh, yeah, cause I P believe, work. Yeah, I believe that Young Bleed album is actually under No Limit. For some odd reason, it's it's a it's the, like a joint the part, yeah the partnership between C Loke doing production on some of the side projects. P put his distribution behind Young Bleeds, my balls and my words. Hey, I don't have a problem with that album. I don't. That's a fantastic album. I still play it to this day. How you do that there is a classic. But have you ever heard how you do that there without P and M on it? There's a version without P. It's just straight bleed. Is it on the album? It's not on that album. What album is it on? It's on his other album. Is it on Apple Music? Well, if it's not, I'm pretty sure you got a copy of it. You can email me. No, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of great songs that don't have P. Like, the original Wobble Wobble was pretty valid. The, ori- I- the magic version? Yeah. Yes. That's valid. Valid in a motherfucker. We didn't need the 504. Bus. We didn't need the 5. That was horrible. That was, that was a desperate attempt to try to sell an album that should never have came out. Yeah, because they was way because it was supposed that. to be P mystical and, and silk. silk. Who? What? What did P <laughs> see in it? I know that's your brother. <laughs> what did he see? <laughs> like I know that's your brother. Okay, we not gonna completely shit on silk. I'm I'm gonna give him credit. He, Weed and Hennessy. Charge it to the game was his best work. Just be straight with me. Best work. I don't. I don't know who wrote the bars. Wasn't wasn't Silk. I don't. I don't know if they told him to chill out on his delivery. I don't know if he was just in his bag when they did that album. But that is probably some of his best work. Charge it to the game is Silk the Shocker's best album. Well, not disagree with you on that. But we about to get into the main event, people. I, I you know what? Shout out to Master P for giving us Destiny's Child. Yeah. He definitely put Beyonce Because we would not have a Beyonce if it, if it wasn't for, for Silk. Yeah, it wasn't for Silk and P. Because I, I had to go back and look. Because they was also on the Ghetto Boy song, Gangsters Put Me Down. Mm-hmm. Like Bushwick Bill or some No Limit shit? No, no, no. It was Ghetto Boys. It was, uh, it was when Bushwick was gone. It was just Willie D and Scarface. Oh, it was that album. I sound so terrible. No, that song is so fucking fire. Is this like 97? I think so. Oh, God. I got it. Is it on Apple Music? You know it is. I have to listen to this. Yes, dog. It's dope. It's called Gangsters Put Me Down. The beat, the beat is, 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 it sounds like it should be a Manny Fresh beat. It's, it's, you should fuck with it. Yeah. It probably is a Manny beat when you think about it because they wasn't really on yet. So he could have been low-key producing back then. So, but before we get into the main event, I just want to say shout out Tennis Ball. Cause we holding big crit down, but when when people got to come back, when we pe- got to do another story time with tennis ball. That's true too. But when people of today throw their top three rappers of right now, they usually go J Cole, facts, Kendrick Lamar, facts, Drake. Now I was a strong advocate for putting Big Sean in that fourth spot because Big Sean he can rap. He can. I like. I, I don't know if I said this on the show before, but I feel like he takes one step forward, and then he'll take two steps backwards. Dark Paradise, step forward. TM88, two steps backwards. Not saying that you shouldn't do you know songs with your girlfriend, but hey, <laughs> just two steps backwards. I decided a big step forward. Then you drop this mixtape with Metro, and Metro Boomin is the hottest nigga in the game. Nobody can compare to Metro's production right now. They can't. And you drop this, and then it's so subpar, and it's like, two steps back, my nigga. So, for those who are going to listen to the show, 
I'm voting that when y'all speak of those top three rappers, the fourth rapper should be Big Crit. Big Crit earned the right to be in the top four regardless. Because when you go back and listen to shit like Catalactica. That was dope. That was a fucking dope ass album. And the crazy part is the song that I listen to the most on like live from the underground yeah. is that one that sounds like a Negro spiritual. It's the remix of the title. It's the remix of the title song. I'm coming live. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that shit was dope. Like it was like that's fucking dope. And then his bar, his words have meaning. Like everybody goes in about how J Cole speaks truth. Right. Like KOD. Fucking all, fire. All true. Fucking fire. And and on the, on the back of the beef episode, 1985 is, is the shit. Check out the DJ Premier remix of it called 1966. They literally, he literally took the vocals for 1985 and put it on old school beats. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got it in the car. On the way back to the crib, I'll let you hear it. But uh, my my only real beef with J Cole is that when he does albums, he's so involved that it's too much of him. But isn't that what you want? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay, explain. Like, J Cole is the rapper. J Cole is the producer. J Cole sings his own fucking background vocals, like. Sometimes it's just too much of him. What J. Cole doing right now is, in my opinion, the equivalent to when Wayne dropped the Carter one. Or when Wayne was 500 degree Wayne. Like, you have the bars. We we get it. But this is all Wayne over a Manny Fresh beat. And then it took that Carter two for Wayne to step out of the shell. It was like, okay, well... You you have no safety net because you can't get on this track and bullshit us because there is no Manny Fresh beat to be like, okay, it's going to bail you out. But You I, have to rap and stand on your own too and, and deliver the bars because we know your beat selection ain't going to be as great as it was when you had in-house. But isn't that supposed to be the growth of an artist though? Like, J. Cole got praise, like heavy praise for... What's the album before the last one? For Your Eyes Only? Or the Forest Hill Drive album? The Forest Hill Drive album. The Forest Hill 2014 album? Yeah, he got heavy praise for that album because... He didn't have a feature. He had to have a single feature, and he did everything himself. Right, and, and I get it. Like, And I'm not saying that it's bad. It's just... I feel like making a song is like gumbo. It's like It's like good cooking. It is. If you don't use any seasoning, it's bland. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do, you have to get outside help for everything. But if you get a little outside help, it puts a different dynamic on it. And people see you in a different light. Like, I feel like J. Cole is finna tiptoe into that Wale territory. Ooh. And he's going to get boring. We lost Wale. We lost Wale a long time ago. Like, Wale was supposed to be in the top three. Oh, um, at least top five. You know. And he, he was supposed to be there. We lost Wale a long time ago. And the sad part is we lost him before he got picked up by MME. You think so? I think so. I think we lost Wale after MMG. MMG, my fault. Who's MME? I don't That was the bar. That we used to go to with my oh. <laughs> like where's it me? Shout out to that bar we used to go to. Yeah, I just I just feel like J. Cole's gonna enter that Wale territory and people gonna think he's but, boring. They but not start. really though. I think I think that's when you find your dedicated fans. What Wale's and, got dedicated fans, but then well, you, he does. You have fans like me who look at Wale like I look at Nas. Like, Nas got bars. I'll never dis- dispute the fact that Nas can rap. I hate Nas's beat selection. Because he's a New Yorker. But like, and he tries to stay true to his roots. Sometimes you got to break bond. Like, I feel like if you take the stories that Nas can tell you. And, and put then, it over different and beats. And you give him some trap beats like how Ross tell his stories. I don't know. If we I can, fucking got hits. I don't know if I can. See, but 
that's the thing, dog. Like, not everybody, not everybody's going to accept that. Like, I'm not saying that if you put Nas on the Metro Boomin' beat, we might not get the coldest Nas song ever. But it's just the fact. Like, until it happens, we're not going to picture it. It was right. like we would well, never. It's well, like it's like we never pictured Jordan in being anybody else's jersey but a Chicago jersey until he put that wizard. Until shit he on. put a wizard one on, and that's how I feel with Nas and these beats. Until Nas actually allows outside of New York production to do beats for him, we're not going to get the sound that may be He's maybe the best album ever. Well. I'm a, I'm gonna see what he's talking about because apparently he does have a new project coming. He does. A lot of people have a new project. I don't know if it's dropping this year. I keep hearing that it's coming this year, so we'll see. Because Redman has a new project coming out this year. I fucks with Redman a little bit. It's Muddy Water too at that. Oh yeah, I definitely gotta fucks with that. Because Muddy Waters won. That was the one with the chicken head convention on it. I don't know why Redman still got these damn braids, but because he's trying to hold on with a little hair he got left. You gotta remember, Red getting old. Red even Red starting to look up. But you know what, dog? I just realized something. We are now in the age where we can actually have fifty-five year old rappers. I believe Hov is making that very popular. I think, and it's because our lyricists from back in the days that are growing up, that are growing old, can still step in the booths. Like our Scarfaces, our Jay Z's, our Red Man's, and, and I think we'll accept it because this is what we grew up up with. on. Like you wouldn't mind another project from Scarface because when you were uh, maybe fifteen, Ghetto Boys was my shit. Right, Scarface was popping. That's why I like because the third Ghetto Boys album got me through high school. Right, like, <laughs> and it's crazy because I feel like me and my favorite rapper aren't too far off an of age difference. Right. Like, Wayne is 34, maybe? Right, he's just a little bit older than and you. I'm finna be 30, so, like, I wouldn't mind if Wayne was like, all right, I'm 50, but I still got these fucking flows for you. But <laughs> I'm I, out you. But I think, but also, this is the key thing about that is, all the rappers who can make that transition and continue to make music, even when we get older, we're never gimmick rappers. You're right. Like, that's the problem what I have with mumble rappers. Like, the Migos, as awesome as they are right now, I can't see the Migos still rapping in their 40s. I can't see them doing that shit at 30. Exactly. Because this shit sound like, it's popular and it's popping. Right. But... I feel like if I was to get in a booth and start rapping like them niggas, niggas would be like, hey, why? Shut the fuck up. Right. You can't do Sit it down. because it's not. But someone like a Wale or a J. Cole or a Kendrick, I can see them doing it until they're 50. I don't want Wale to do it until he's 50. He go make love ballad raps. I think Wale is the LL Cool J of this time. And that's why LL is still around. LL will only sit down. Because he wants to. LL have fire beats though. He do. Like lounging was the shit. Mama said knock you out. Do it. Like just think about all the songs he did for bitches. Beats, every beats every was fire. Al- he would have twelve song albums and eight songs for bitches. Beats were fire though. Like love you better. Pharrell got his shit off. Beat was fire. See that's because. But okay, my can, whole can thing we is, get Nas on a fucking Pharrell beat? I mean, damn. I think he. This <laughs> is like Jesus Did Christ. Did he? Did he? It's getting nice with the fucking Neptunes or something, bro. What about Steve Aiki? I'll, I'll accept that. You'll, you'll accept that? Okay. Because that, uh, that colony anthem is my shit right now, dog. But it's almost time to wrap up the show. Yeah, we getting there. But it's main event time. So before we get out of here. We have to cover Drake versus Pusha T. Drake has been in a lot of fucking beefs, dog. Over the past like five, six years? Yes. yes. Like, Drake, Drake has been in a lot of shit. What? He, did he snuffed him? <laughs> talking shit. Stop talking shit. Him and, and him and Brown, C. Brown got into it. And he don't want no smoke with Chris Brown. 
he was caping for a bitch that still wants to kick it with CB. That's the crazy shit. So, for all those who do not know, this is just my personal opinion. Wayne started this beef. <laughs> Why do you say Wayne this started? Is, this is all Wayne's fault. Okay, so, I don't know how heavy you are into the clips. You might be, you might not be. Are you, you familiar with a lot of the albums or not? Yes. Okay, because, I mean, you like Pharrell, so I figured you fuck with it. I fuck with it. So, there was one point in time where you've heard of Bathe the Ape, right? Most definitely. The clothing company? Yeah. So, apparently... I'm too old for that shit, but yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. And I'm only 30. So, apparently, Pusha was rocking a lot of Bathe the Ape at one point in time. Of course. And then Wayne started wearing a lot of Bape. That's because they skateboarders. Well, whatever the reason is why yeah. Wayne was wearing it, Wayne started wearing a lot of bape. So this is back in like 06. Right? right. So this is like Carter to Wayne. Okay. Which every time I saw Wayne do a video, he had on some Bay the Nape shit. So I understood. So apparently, Pusha T has some bars for Wayne on uh, his track called Mr. Me Too. Ah, I fucked with that song. He, he had some bars for Wayne. And then instead of Wayne, you know, responding in a song, he responded in an interview because I guess the interviewer must have asked him. I was like, well, how do you feel about these, you know, jabs push the T taking at you? And he was like, uh, if I'm paraphrasing it from the quote I read online, he said that uh, when you was wearing this shit, niggas thought you was weird. I started wearing this shit, niggas think it's cool. Okay. So that was that. Then he later said, fuck Pusha T and anybody who like them, like him, fuck you too. Okay. So all in all, all Wayne has had to say over the past 10 years is fuck Pusha T. Okay. But doesn't this, doesn't this go back to your previous question about does every diss need to be responded to? Yes. So you feel that Pusha should have came at Wayne? No, 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 no. Or Wayne should have responded no. back? I felt I felt like when Pusha T threw jabs at Wayne, Wayne should have jabbed back. Because right now, like I feel like when, when it, all it is is jabs, there's no harm, no foul. Right. Like It's a point system at that point. Right, it's just a point system. Like You have no problems with sparring with the best nigga that we think is the greatest rapper alive. Right. Like, you have no problem jumping out the window when Hove say something. When Hove make the slightest reference to you in a track, you get to talk about kidnapping his bitch and all type of random <laughs> shit. Like, you jump out the window on Jay. But Pusha serve you with a with a slight body blow, and all you got is fuck Pusha T and fuck anybody that like Pusha That's T. That's because... Did Wayne really not want no smoke with Pusha? That's what I was going to say. See, Jay... Jay is business now. This is not in them streets hove. This is business hove. So, yeah, some things might be said on the track. You might wait until you get ready to drop an album. There are a couple of more out there to see what's going to happen. Jay might wait until he getting ready to drop another track and then responds back. And then they all might be sitting at dinner one day just chilling. You're not going to push two and two together because that's just that's a musical man thinking. It's not. Fuck you, fuck everything you stand for. At the end of the day, I'm the one winning. I got one baby mama. She's literally a religion. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Much. I got money in places that you can only dream about getting into. You know what I'm saying? Why would I want to, you know, stoop down to your level, but I'll dish you in this song because that's going to make me more money. Whereas in Pusha T's like, I'll come over, I'll slap you with a gun. I fuck all your baby mamas and then come on you. Pause. <laughs> kind of a dude. <laughs> okay. Disrespectful. Right. So, and the crazy part is he will put that in the song. Fact. Okay. So that's kind of like, okay, do I really want to go at somebody who ain't got nothing to lose? That's another thing you got to think about in these diss tracks. When you diss somebody, do they got something to lose? Okay. 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 What? Keep that thought in mind, because when we get to the end of this, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you that again. Right. So, 
Now, I don't know what came first, but apparently Drake jumps out the window. Always. Drake jumped out the window. Now, I, I don't know if Two Birds, One Stone came first before Pusha T drop Exodus. I think Two Birds, One Stone did come first. Because Drake drops Two Birds, One Stone, and he's calling out Pusha T for being a fake drug dealer. Okay. Now, I don't know. Why you want to question this man's street cred? But you don't question someone's street cred. Especially you buy, when you light skin. If you want that smoke. Light skin niggas in these streets. You know what? I'm not going to go there. I just Because there's going to be a light skin nigga that's in these streets that's going to show up one day. I just feel like niggas in these beefs, they pick and choose who they have bars for. They do. Like, you want smoke with Pusha T, but Joe Button was all in your anal cavity. Pause. With just diss after diss. And you didn't say nothing to Joe. You ain't want no smoke with Joe Button, but you want to smoke with Pusha T. Joe, I, I don't get but it. But Joe be having beef with everybody. He had beef with the Migos for no reason. It's when to jump him. So he just mad because they winning. So now we uh, kind of fast forward and oh, excuse me, this whole Quentin Miller ghostwriting situation is at the forefront of. Drake, like, are you really writing your bars? Are you not writing your bars? And for those who did not listen to Pusha T's album, Pusha T takes notice and takes jabs at Drake once again on the last album on the track, Infrared. Okay. He takes more jabs at Drake and the ghostwriting thing. Drake responded, like, Pusha T album dropped last week, Friday. Right. Push Drake responded that fucking Saturday. Well, because because I was off, we were together. But this is the same day that this is the same guy who dropped back to back on Meek Mills. Like he dissed him one day, we get and then that. dropped gonna, another we're, one we're gonna, the next day. We're gonna get to that too. Okay. So then Drake drops Duppy Freestyle. Now, did you did you listen to Duppy Freestyle? I listened to Duppy Freestyle. That's really how, what. How did you feel? Okay, give give me your give me your opinions about the Duppy. If Freestyle. it wasn't until people pointed out the fact that he mentioned his fiance's name at the end, it would have been a subpar diss, in my opinion. Because he took shots at Kanye too. He did take shots at Kanye, but with the state of Kanye has been lately. I look past it as just ordinary niggas talking about Because if you think about it, J. Cole dropped a whole song a couple of years, if like last year, a couple of years ago, about Kanye not being the same Kanye he used to be. Yeah, but I don't think that was a diss track. I think that was more just it was a, it was a oh it was a please give me the old Kanye right, back. Right. That's more like a plea. Like, yeah, because I'm old, pleading for the old Kanye. Right? Can we get the old Kanye? I back? want the old Wayne too. Like all these like old we ones. ain't got no problem with the new Kanye, but can we get some I, old Kanye? When you hear Ye, you, you, you'll change that opinion. <laughs> I don't. I don't okay. like it. Kanye, I don't see how people like. He's it. an artist, dude. I expect creators. I like the Jaden Smith album, so. I can't Look, really judge. I understand that Kanye is feeling this euphoric feeling that he's never felt before. It's a second place. And I I don't know what it's, I was expecting, but the, the shit I heard. It's the Kardashians, dog. I was not expecting. This is, a, this is a Kim Kardashian album, not a Kanye West album. <laughs> <laughs> so, Duppy Freestyle. You felt like it was light? It was, it was light. It was, but... After going through the history of disc records that we just went through, it's a typical disc record. It wasn't until certain people got vicious in history that we stood up and took notice of so, of so. how we went crazy. Like take car KRS one and, and Nelly. Like KRS one dissed Nelly because of the new sound that was coming out. And then Nelly dropped number one. Yeah, till you till you close the Super Bowl, keep your mouth on lock. So most most it's usually most not until bar it's not until the response battle. that you understand the level of are we are we in a sparring match? Are we Mayweather fighting or are we Mike Tyson fighting? 
Well, apparently Pusha T's Mike Tyson fight. Right. Dre was Mayweather. <laughs> he, he's out here for points. Okay. <laughs> he's out here for points. <laughs> he's out here for points. And apparently Pusha T is out here to knock a nigga out the third round because he's trying to beat the Vegas spread. <laughs> so the story of a- ADI. Okay. Which is apparently Drake's illegitimate child. See. <laughs> like, no. Now, here's the thing. The story is that this porn star that Drake decided, Aubrey decided to put his penis in. I don't even know if she's really a porn star. I looked her up. No. On, she, I looked her up on Pornhub. She, she's not on Pornhub. Yes, yeah, she is. It's softcore porn. Like, all soft, she, all she do is twerk videos. It's porn is porn. She, she don't get no dick in her. That's not She porn. might have kind of pulled it down being a parent. Because, you know, free porn, they, they clean that shit up. Like, <laughs> Stacey Lane done got married, got a kid on the way, and you can find very few of her her videos. Lacey Duvall, who used to be all over Pornhub, got very few tracks on there, too, now. So, it, they clean that shit up over time. Uh, but, uh, let's just say, alleged porn star. They're saying that it's not his kid, because he didn't get her knocked up, which is also what fucked up the situation with him and Rihanna. Rihanna actually was going to give him a chance for them to be an actual couple, but he wouldn't stop fucking strippers and stop fucking strippers and porn stars. That's why she wouldn't deal with him. You know how much money Drake has? And he, he I would fuck strippers and porn stars with that guy. But if ass. you can have okay, either you fuck strippers and porn stars or you can get Rihanna. It's a sickness, bro. It's got to be. And then you know what? I'm not going to put that past him. He's a young dude who... Drake that, is living the fantasy. He's living his Mo. best life. He's living... Most most niggas live through Drake. And right. I say that do. because... You remember that game niggas used to play with the chicks as a kid? And they were, who you marry, you have a mansion mm-hmm. car type shit with yeah, the finger, finger things. Drake is fucked J-Lo. He did. You know how many niggas grow up like, I want to fuck j That's why I can't be mad at Nick Cannon. He fucked Mariah Carey. Right. That's why you can't be he mad. He put at... two babies in that bitch. That's why, that's why I can never be, you mad, can't at be Nick mad at Nick Cannon. You can make a terrible movie, bruh. But you can make me laugh and you fuck Mariah Carey. You still winning in life. All right. right. But so, no, getting, getting back to the point. Um, do you feel that once Drake... Okay, first of all, did you hear the story of ADI? Of course I did. That's what I was getting ready to go in. So... Even though the, the baby is alleged in regards to it, he's also put out that he has he has still sent money to take care of the situation. But for some odd reason, there's a paternity test hasn't been done to 100% prove if it's if his or not. They basically saying that bro has the old girl has been with many famous people trying to basically fuck her way to a green card. So it may not even be his kid. So that bitch stuck in Toronto. I don't know where the hell she at, but she ain't in the U.S. <laughs> okay, uh, so you heard the diss track. But I heard the diss track, dog. Now, do you think Pusha jumped out the window on Drake? I think, like we said, he Mike Tyson the situation. So do you feel like once Drake mentioned his fiance's name, all bets were off? Yes. Okay, so it was posted in Sweats and Suit, shout out to Seth and Eric, of... A post was made, what are the rules and limitations in a diss track? And some of us said kids, because, you know, me, my kids, is, is my world. Like, you can diss me all you want. Like, as a crew, outside, you can rib each other. You can talk about me all I want. Don't talk about my kids. Right. Okay? Leave, leave the kids out of it. But apparently, because of Ice Cube and Tupac, nobody's safe. If we are fight just like a regular fist fight, if me and you are squaring up the fight because we got beef, if I hit you with a chair to knock you out, <laughs> it's cool. Right. Okay? So that's how we feel about this. So at the moment in time, Pusha T covets his fiance as his his top priority. That that is his his crown jewel. And you put her in this disc. If she wouldn't have got brought up, this may have been your typical clean back and forth diss track to promote albums. That's probably what it would have been. But because you brought her into it, 
question the fact of her marrying you. Yeah, bruh, I'm going to get whatever I can. And he got two key things. He brung up the paternity of a kid you're not claiming in a world where if you a deadbeat dad, you are crucified. And the blackface situation. And, and the fourth one, he, he, in so many words, he called your mom's a thought. Yeah, he said your mom ain't never get married. She ain't never gonna have no happiness, and you just parade your dad around with them big ass Steve Harvey suits. <laughs> oh my god, he, he killed him. See, but I'm a, parents are okay because we used to do mama jokes back in the days. I didn't. I didn't have a problem with. You know what? Honestly, like I, don't, I grew up on Tupac. I didn't have a problem with the district. I okay, I take it back. I had a problem with one part of the district. What part? What he said about forty. Why? 40, I guess, has multiple sclerosis. Okay. Which is, a, I guess, it's a fatal illness. It, multiple sclerosis is severe. And, like... And MS is a serious yeah, thing. My yeah. sister my sister actually has a mild case of MS right now. So, yeah. And, I, like, fam could potentially, like, just wake up and not wake up. True. Kick, kick the bucket. Yeah. But you, you said that about dog's best friend. Now, I, that's the only part that kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's like... So you shouldn't say that about his. Okay, so knowing that he talked about your mom and dad, knowing he brung up your illegitimate ch- your illegitimate child with the porn star at that, right? Um, he talked about your best friend who may eventually end up being a wheelchair, Jimmy, and he put a photo of you in blackface. Cause, cause I feel like with the proper PR, you can get around. Yeah, because he got around the blackface situation. Right, with the proper PR, you can get around blackface. He did already. He came out and said that that was from a scene when him and his co-worker, when they were working on Degrassi, uh, a Sudanian woman, uh, was basically doing this thing about awareness of how it was hard for blacks to actually get roles in acting coming up. Now, Pusha T even fired back on the PR, was saying... Bullshit. No, okay. That was his words. <laughs> Sum it up to paraphrase. He said, bullshit. You claim that you were doing all this when you were acting to get the word out about how hard it was for blacks to succeed in this world. But now you have a platform even bigger than you've ever had before. And you don't say nothing. And you don't say shit now. There's a lot going on in this world right now that you can be utilizing your platform for and you never do. So, bullshit on that excuse. Okay. But, like I was saying, you can get around the fact that you can PR the fact that you were in blackface. <laughs> I mean, you calling my mom's a thought and saying my dad wore extra big ass Steve Harvey suits. Look. That's cool. We because a say, lot of people, moms are thoughts, and a lot of dads wear extra big suits. Like, them, <laughs> them just Jones. Them your mama jokes, your daddy right. jokes. We do that back in the day all day. You can't, this ghostwriting shit, okay, cool, we know I'm not writing my own bars. whoop you fucking do I gave a nigga a job and now y'all mad. But, if my best friend dies, or is in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, you said that. And I can't get over that. So that, so you come back with a dick. Now, the funny part is, but, is he did put out $20,000 to anybody who can find dirt on Pusha T, though. That, he should have kept that a secret. He pushy said something about that too, he because he he pushes like Mimi. Everything about him is out there already, so there's nothing you can dig up on him. That's what makes Pusha the winner in this fight, because there's nothing that Pusha has to hide that you can come back. It's like the end of Eight Miles. Yes, I got everything on the table right now. What can you talk about me? What can you say about me that would make you win this fight? But, okay, you're right. But that that's also where he fucked up at, too. Okay. Like, when he said, oh, I got 20 racks for anybody that can find me dirt on Pusha, that is an emotional response. It is. When you, but I don't, I don't blame him for the fact that if we get past all this other shit, you said my best friend's gonna die. Like, you know his situation, and you still say that you speak. Like, some shit is unspeakable. True. And you said it. 
which garnered the re- emotional response was like, well, I got 20 racks for anybody who can find me dirt on Pusha T. Just like when not when Jay-Z did Super Ugly. Super Ugly. After, ugly. E- after Ether. That was emotional. Because why would you mention the condom on the baby seat? That was low. I mean, if you go back to the takeover, Ether, and Super Ugly, it was a lot. Jay had already lost. He did. Either bodied Hove. He had already lost. Did he really lose? Because he ended up signing Nas to his. He lost label. the battle. He didn't lose the war. There's okay. a difference. And that's how people. I think people look at these things. They look at them as more as the battle is the war. No. Because we live in a pop tart world. Pusha T is going to win the battle, but Drake is still going to be Drake. And here's and that's another thing that I think Drake is going to do that I don't want him to do. Okay. Like, it's a battle. Let's just, bar, let's go bar for bar. Let's get personal if you want to get personal. Okay. So, even if Drake got a lie, I fucked your fiance. That's what I would say. Don't even do if that. It's, even if it's not true. Don't do to that. You and I already jumped out the window talking about I got Don't 20. Don't do that. I got, See, I got 20 racks. Because now, but here's the thing though, bro. You already see that what made Pusha go the way he did and all you said was you questioned whether or not she should marry him. And now you're going to make up this audacity lie that you done put your penis inside her. That may get you pop, bruh. You may really <laughs> become wheelchair Jimmy. That nigga may bang your spine, dog. Don't do that. With just, the back just crack on national television and go do some months behind it. It was provoked. And most and the judge might might just let him off. Like, yeah, somebody said that about my wife or fiance, I'll do the same thing too. Okay, three months. <laughs> so what you So the only thing Drake really can do is bow out gracefully. Either you bow out gracefully or you just make a hit song. You gotta bow out gracefully. So you think he just needs to tap He gotta out? go find Chuck D so they can publicly squash this beef. <laughs> or or you need to fucking go get Wayne out of rehab. So y'all can make a diss track together. Cause Kanye said, "Hey man, I'm, I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I'm I'm, I'm here about love." Look, Kanye's in a sunken place right now, dog. He, so he's fake woke. <laughs> he ain't even woke, bro. He, he blonde with a white woman. He is nowhere near woke. Kanye was got blonde hair now. He had blonde hair for a minute. Oh my god, dog! He out here hanging out with uh Trump. Wearing a Make America Great Again hat, which is so fucking opposite from when George Bush was president. So. I would rather George Bush be president right now. Nah, bro. I just let us run wild for about four years and see what happens. <laughs> like, we just have no leadership. That would be better. No, but uh, honestly, bro, if, if we get a legitimate response from Drake, I... It would have to be garbage. Just let it be garbage so he can lose and it be done with. And then, like, at an award show or something, they squash the beef. I would like, I don't think this beef is squashable, though. It, it Technically, it can be. Like, all it does is just niggas just need to apologize and say we took it too far. Who, who's going to apologize? Dr- he's light-skinned. It's a light-skinned dude. Drake apologize is first. not going to apologize. He's going to do it. He's not. He's going to try to save his white fans. Drake looked like if he apologized, it's going to be like a backhanded compliment. I didn't say it was going to be a sincere one. but yeah, If it's gonna not going to be sincere, then why the fuck do it? To save his white fans. He, Drake, don't, Drake don't give a fuck. You say that now. He, until All he care about is bitches buying this Scorpion album. Which is why he will apologize so the bitches will buy it. He's going to say something like he he's sorry for making the remarks about women. Women should be cherished. We care about women. Marriage is a beautiful thing. This is not my child, but I still take care of it until we find the true dad. It's going to be some bullshit that's going to be said. That's going to make this a better place to live in. Yeah, I bet that damn Pusha T diss track one in God's Plan. God's Plan. Which was a fucking hot ass song, though. Yeah, it wasn't nice for you. Yeah, nice for what, huh? And then you drop, I'm upset. Now I'm upset you did that bullshit. (laughs) What the fuck was that? I don't know, bruh. But we have come to the end of tonight's episode. Yes, we have. It's been a great show. It has been a fantastic show. It's the first Death Fresh show on the mic. Will Smith is the greatest. 
Yeah, really? It. Nigga get back in the booth one time and Prove niggas dubbing him the greatest. Prove me wrong. What numbers what, what what numbers are you using to say he's not? He's bro, he's he's got everything. Why why can't he be the greatest? Cause he did men in black. That's the music here. We so? Not the movie, I'm talking about the song. It was a hot white folks loved it. That's cause white folks love Will Smith. Okay. So he's the first crossover artist. Will Smith got a Grammy and didn't accept it. That's clout. Because he was doing it for the people. He was pissed off that our awards were not being represented on TV. So he took one for the team. Our awards. What awards? Hip hop. Will Smith ain't never been no damn Soul Train Awards, no Source Awards. Yes, he has. Has he? I don't know, bro. It was the 80s. They probably weren't even around back then. So, before we leave, most disrespectful diss track. I got to go with no Vaseline, dog. Like, as 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 rude as uh, Hit Em Up was, Pac only did, like, one verse in that whole song. He, His he, boys did he, the rest of the he, song. Pac had two verses. Okay, two verses. Are you, I, count, are you counting the end when he was ranting? No, then that's three if we count the end. Okay, so it was a five-track song. Whereas in, from beginning to end, it was Ice Cube. He was a highly pissed off guy. Everybody got fucked by Jerry Heller in this song. Jesus. It was vicious. It was rude. It was raunchy. I personally, like, and I know I'll probably get killed for this. I'll disqualify Hit Him Up. Why? Because I don't like the Outlaws. <laughs> Point blank period. I've always thought the Outlaws were trash. Okay. And I mean, that's, that's that's your opinion. And then the fact that they did Baby Don't Cry, Gotta Keep Your Head Up Part 2, you should just left that shit alone. Baby, please don't cry. Gotta keep your head up, even though the road is hard, you never gave up. Yeah, that shit was garbage. It was the beat, dog. If it was if it was left on the original lullaby beat that it was originally made mm, for. Child. That's my shit in real life, though. Yeah, so I I disqualified. So who do you pick? Because Idi Amin was a booty. You just do not like the outlaw. No, I fucking don't. (laughs) Fucking trash. I'm mad that they do still be eating off the name of pot even to this day. Uh, Most disrespectful diss track. No Vaseline is 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 in the Hall of Fame, but it wasn't my era to live through. I give you that. So I can't really. No Vaseline, I can't, I can't, because it's not my era. What about Ether? Ether was pretty fucking disrespectful. He told Jay-Z he was 36 in a karate class. <laughs> you tie bow ho, you trying to work it out. And then he told me still whoop his ass. Yeah, Ether was, was pretty, pretty disrespectful. I don't know. That hell, that hell Mary shit with 50... And M was was pretty raunchy. M has made some really nasty disses too, though. M be dissing his moms, though. Does that count? That counts, bro. No, it doesn't. A diss track doesn't have to be against somebody who's like an actual oh, artist. Okay. Because okay. F Granddad was the first diss track towards an old dude. You just mad because your ass is old. <laughs> Fuck Grandpa. Like, why'd you get Nate Dogg to sing this? Why they don't enter Jackson next to one old nigga? <laughs> because Snoop was in it. Okay, so if you want to throw M in there, I would have to say, have you ever heard the song Kim? Of course. Like, you made a whole song about dragging your bitch through the woods and killing her. That's that's fire. I mean, clean out my closet was pretty vicious too, dog. I just why is he always taking shots at his mom? Because he really did not like his mom. His mom was a bad mother. Can you be mad at him? That's what Ree going to do to you, Mimi. What you going to do? What would you do, Mimi, if somebody, if you found out Ree did a diss track on you? Your mic ain't live, though, so you got to go to Juan's mic. Or just say it out loud. Or you could be like my old coworker who got fired and decided to make a diss track. I think that's going to be the new thing now. And the fact that the nigga added me on Facebook and tagged me to it. And you didn't send me this link? We could have closed the show with it. 
Nah, because Jeff told me not to be spreading it like that. He probably going mad I was talking about it on the show. Yeah. But that's when I say, when is too far, too far? I, like, would, cause I like, would think I, dissing your boss is too far. Because I sat and I listened to the diss track. Okay. And it, it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. I'm like, so when you think you cool with a nigga and then the first thing you say on the track is you call us all a bunch of like. And like, if the beef would have just stayed between him and bro, I'd have been cool. Like, you know, hey, I, the position of his job, he's not going to respond. Right. Because he's the fucking store director. Right. So I know he's not going to dish you. He's not going to jump out the window on you. But what if he did? He'd probably get fired because dog will probably run and take it straight to corporate. Hey, but what would you do if you found out that uh, CEOs was making diss tracks to other CEOs? I would be pissed because he wouldn't <laughs> let me on the diss track. No, I'm just saying, but what if you found out like this is how CEOs handle issues? Like, so Toys Sh- R Us Sean's drops... dissing Scott? Like, Toys R Us puts a diss track out to Amazon. I mean, Wendy's did. Wendy's did. I was like, Wendy's, Wendy's did. Wendy's did fuck, <laughs> fuck McDonald's up for like, like four tracks. I forgot about that shit last summer. <laughs> got to play Wendy, but that bitch got bars. Like they just came out. Like, what would make you think to do that? Is that is this is this where hip hop has gotten to? It's good marketing. We're com- we get commercial disses now. It's good marketing. It is great marketing. I mean think about it, fam. Like the only person that I really don't publicly see like taking shots is McDonald's. Like like, so like Burger big. King had a commercial of them breaking in McDonald's and robbing them for like secret sauce or some shit. Yeah, they literally jacked the whole Big Mac and said, "Yeah, we got one too." Right. Like all it was missing was like the bitch at the end of this commercial. I'm like, so Burger King been taking shots. Wendy's just said, "Hey, fuck both of you niggas. We here. We just dropped the whole shit. Damn. We, can we get that old black lady from Popeyes to just get to talking shit, talking greasy? She got to. She got to like be that person at the end of the track." That be talking. She can't. She, she can't. Gotta, she got to get her Tupac on. She just got to talk. Like, fuck KFC. Fuck churches. Fuck JJ's. And if and you like to go to Harold, well, then fuck you too. Right. Just, <laughs> and if you down with uh, church's chicken, fuck you too. It's like, Jesus. Why do y'all. How does restaurants have beef? Like, dog. 
that's what the world should do. The world, like marketing from here, from like the rest of the summer, should just be diss tracks. I know, man. I'm I'm waiting on bro to say, hey, we finna get in the studio on diss like, tracks. Farming, say, farming like, fleets need to just diss Home Depot. Like we finna get in the studio. We finna diss Pig and Say. We finna <laughs> diss Whole Foods. We diss at Metro Markets. We diss at Trader Joe's. Like I, I got bars for all these. Not Trader Joe's. Don't fuck with Whole Foods, dog. Hey, fuck. Whole, Whole Foods gonna give you that enlightened beef. If you down with Whole Foods, then fuck you too. Hey, bro. Whole Foods be having like them Amazon lockers, dog. I that should be clutch. Hey, we gonna just try to Joe's. I didn't even know there was a grocery store. Yeah, bro. They I, small as like the store is probably no bigger than Mimi's house. I just thought they sold beef jerky. I, I bullshit you not. I've never. been I give you a pass. Because the name don't imply a Define, grocery store. Like, I thought it was like an equipment store that sold beef jerky. And it's been in Bayshore forever. Yeah, because it's like, you can only park in that spot if you're going in Trader Joe's. You have to be going in that store to get. And then I went in there one day and they got, they got small stuff. For like $35. Or, organic shit and flowers. Get some bomb ass flowers from in there. Where is Stein's Gardens and Gifts? They should start dissing niggas. Stein's is off of... Because everybody needs a little sunshine. Not Watertown Plank. Yeah, it is. Off of Watertown Plank. They should like just, 120th in they Watertown. Should, they should get in on that Home Depot beef. Fam, that that Christmas jingle would be the shit. They just use uh, Santa Claus rap as the background music. I'm just saying. All right, so we said we was going to end like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, but it's just, like, beef can go so... Because beef been going on for so long, dog. It has been. All right, so, I'd like to thank y'all for tuning into this edition of the Death Rush Show. Make sure you check us out on iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and soon to be on Spotify, because, yeah, we've been doing it that long. With that being said, let's go ahead and close tonight's song out. <laughs> 